5.30 a.m. Early for some, but not too early though for rank star Belinda Lee to start her day. She'll be on the set at Pinewood, made up and ready to go by 8.30. It's an early start for everyone in the business of making films at the busiest studios in the world. For producers and directors, cameramen and continuity girls, sparks, grips, chippies, props men. Pinewood's a city in miniature, a working city where crafts and creative ideas combine to produce a full and varied program for cinema screens throughout the world. To provide light for the city, here's one place which literally hums with activity, the powerhouse. Harry's the senior shift engineer. He and his crew are responsible for the light and power that's needed on all the sound stages in full production. And here's one of them. Uh, Harry, check out 39 up. It's B okay. stage, where they're getting ready for the first take of the day. One, one down the table there. Just drop a wire on number 39, will you? Spot a turn, Harry. Uh, Harry, check out number 39 up. Okay. Give up. A little more. Oh. Um, one, 140 down to the table there. Camera okay? Mitch, down. Right, thank you. Right, now settle out everywhere. Quiet, bright light, please. And this, this is the moment that never fails to thrill anyone who has a hand in film. However much he's seen it all before. The moment of action. But while they're taking their first shot, let's move on to the makeup department where work has already been going on for a couple of hours and more. And here's Peggy Cummins, being made up for her part in the new rank film, Hell Drivers. Thanks, Billy. Well, there's one thing I must say for this early to bed, early to rise business, it certainly keeps you fit. Take a look at this scene from Hell Drivers with Stanley Baker and Patrick McGowan and you'll see what I mean. <laughs> you tell a good Welshman when you hear one? Cardiff, innit, mate? Near there. A place called Blind Flecker. That's a horrible disease. <laughs> no, he's got the hiccups. <laughs> Give him some water. So you're going to join the L drivers, are you? He's a crack driver, I tell you. He's come to take Red's place. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got your coffin ordered, mate? Uh, what made you decide to put an end to it all, eh? He's after the money. He's saving for the blind. Hey, Rod! <laughs> the, uh, water's getting cold. There's no need to start anything, Red. Or get him to move. Red. Over here, Johnny. How's it come? Yeah. Nice and warm. Gina. <laughs> Your cigar's gone out. My place. If you 
think you're good enough to sit in my place. You have to prove it. Huh? He's as brave as the rest of you. Thought you were gonna see something then, didn't you? Huh? It's the day I'm waiting for. Waiting for it. Finding a story is one of the most important things in filmmaking. This is the Pinewood Story Department, where the unending job goes on of searching, sifting, studying books and screenplays and manuscripts, looking for those few which will make top quality entertainment. And here's that well-loved star of many great films, Flora Robson, looking over a script of her latest picture, High Tide at Noon. This is a film I liked as soon as I read it. Perhaps I'm biased, but I think it will appeal to women. But it appealed to me in the first place because it has a good story. I play the mother in it, the mother of a lovable, strong-willed, proud family on a Nova Scotian fishing island where passions run high. Better St. John plays my daughter, Jo. There are three men who play decisive parts in her life. Oh, Jo. Hi. Pretty around here, isn't it? Just about as pretty as you are. I'm not pretty. Don't talk so foolish. Yeah, uh, sure you are. Pretty as a picture. But you got something else, too. Fire. Like the girls you told me about at the Christmas party? The ones in Cuba. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they got fire, all right. How old are you, Joe? Seventeen. What a wildcat you turned out to be that night, last summer. You're sorry now, though, ain't you? You wouldn't let me go. I was only trying to kiss you. <laughs> I'll bet you, you wouldn't fight like that now, Joe. Now you're growed up, would you? I don't know. Didn't think you would. How about tonight, then, at the... Uh, Old Graham place. Our folks won't let you out, I suppose. Old man ain't gonna let any of the island trash get mixed up with his precious little daughter. I can get out when I want to. Around about half past eight, then? Don't let me down, Joe. Joe, I've been thinking about it for a hell of a long time. I want to marry you, Joe. That's what I want. It's what I've always wanted. Golly, Nils, I... I don't know what to say. Well, you don't need to say anything right now, but... think about it, will you? Of course I will. But, Nils, I know now... I'm not in love with you. I've got to tell you, I, I'm not in love with anybody. making out trawling. Well, I'll have to put a little aside for my lobstering gear. I'll do better when the hakes start to come. I should have a pretty good sized string of traps come September. Then you really are going to stay. I think this place is just about the answer to everything. I think a man could be happy here forever. Cigarette?
British films like High Tide at Noon are more than ever using the world as a location. And every day, film pours in here from many parts of the world. France, Spain, Cornwall, Cumberland, Italy, Australia. These are just some of the locations used in the great rank program for 1957. It's often said that films are made on the cutting room floor. All film editors say so anyway. And here's one of them at work, Alf Room, who's cutting the new Pinewood production across the bridge. And coming in is David Knight, who plays in the picture with Rod Steiger, Bill Nagy, and Marla Landy. He's looked in to see a couple of new sequences. You know, Rod Steiger's one of the most dynamic actors I've ever worked with. Look at him here. He's playing Carl Schaffner, international financier. Ruthless, masterful, utterly confident. It's one of the most powerful performances I've ever seen. Hello, Schaffner here. Oh, boss is lost. It's Miss Hilton. She insisted on speaking to you. Hello. You get rid of the newspapers, huh? Mm. Hello. Clifford, don't stand there like a young idiot. Go inside and don't let anybody come back in here. Yes, sir. That include me? Hello, Schaffner, Schaffner. Yeah. Yeah, I wait. Now, hold on. What's this last? What do you mean you lost a connection? So you try another line. So get them back. I don't care. I'm busy now. You get London back, then you call me. You look as though you could use a drink. Now, here's the same Steiger after his swindles have caught up with him. Money won't buy him one friend. He's found out about humanity too late. He's a man breaking up before your very eyes. And there's a way to go yet before he meets the fate that's waiting for him across the bridge. Stars and stories, editors and technicians, filmmaking calls as we have seen for the different skills of many different departments. On every picture though, they're inspired and welded together by two people, the producer and the director. And here are producer Betty Box and director Rafe Thomas come to view a few scenes from their third film in the enormously successful Doctor series, Doctor at Large. <laughs> Hello, you gorgeous creature. Hello. Muffin, my dear fellow. <laughs> Hello, you two. Hello, Joy. Heaven knows what you look like. What have you done to that tiny face of yours? You mean the glasses? Hmm. Well, I think they like girls to look more serious. You know, intellectual. Well, I, I just think it gives you a better chance of passing. But darling, you don't wear glasses. I know that, but they're only plain glass. Don't you think they're effective? If you want to look like a frog, then. Oh, honestly, Simon. <laughs> Come on, my love, up to the chopping block. I'll be holding my thumbs. Come in. Oh, a female. Yes. Well, you appear more intelligent than most of them, I must say. Doctoring and lipstick don't mix together. Now, come here and tell me what you can see there. Discretion? 
That's right. Now, come along. Come over here. Come on. I've been a little time, girl. Come on. Yes, sir. Oh, get my glasses, will you? They're on the table. What do you want it about? It's a piece of cake. Come! Good morning, son. I don't want any inane remarks. I give you fair warning, I got a touch of the gout this morning. I'm sorry. I've seen you before, haven't I? Yes, sir. I thought so. A good doctor never forgets a face. I suppose with doctors that isn't limited to faces. Sir. <laughs> yeah. What would you do if you came in here and found me lying flat on the floor? Send for a doctor, sir. You are a doctor, man! Sorry, sorry sir. That's quite right. Um, are you snoring, sir? I'm breathing heavily. In that case, I'd tiptoe quietly out again. Don't be an idiot, man. I'm not asleep. People don't go to sleep on the floor. Oh, it has been done, sir, after a strenuous evening. Well, never mind about that. I'm lying on the floor and I'm not asleep. Are you dead, sir? I don't know. I'm asking you. Oh. Well, you wouldn't dart down and ring up the nearest undertaker, would you? No, of course not, sir. I'd examine you. Feel your heart. I'm lying on the stomach. Are you indeed, sir? Quite a problem. Pull over, please. Pull over to the curb. Are you the owner of this contraption? What? This conveyance? Yes, yes, I am. I suppose you realize there are regulations concerning the roadworthiness of all vehicles? Yes. Has this one got an efficient braking system? Absolutely wonderful. Brake on the first stand. Now, we'll try a little demonstration. Now, you proceed along there at normal speed, and I'll follow. When you hear the sound of my horn, you apply your brakes, all right? Let's go. I, uh, <clears throat> I can give you a turn to Grantham if you like. Well, that's how the finished product looks. Now, let's have another look at the sound stages, where all through the day the actual job of shooting the film goes on. You mustn't worry, Filippo. It'll be all right. Cut. Okay, Jerry. Okay. Up. They have just finished shooting a cafe interior scene with a close-up of Belinda Lee. And here comes Belinda now, I... snatching a short rest while the next scene is set up. Hello. You know, I'd like to tell you just a little bit about this film we're making. It's called Miracle in Soho. It's a very human, warm-hearted story about the lives of the people who live in Soho. Particularly the lives of one Italian family. Mine. I'm Julia, and I'm the youngest one. Our father has decided that we should all emigrate to Canada. But each one of us has a different reason for not wanting to go. My reason is John Gregson. Although it does take a miracle to bring us together at the end of the picture. My brother, now he has a different reason. He feels that... But you can see for yourselves in this scene from the picture, which we shot yesterday on this set. Hello, Carl. Come in, come in. This is Mr. Morgan, a friend of Mr. Bishop's. How do you do, Mr. Morgan? Hello. Any friend of Mr. Bishop's, any friend of Mafalda's, very delighted, very pleased. Hello, Carl. Very delighted, very pleased. Hello, Carl. Julia. Very Julia. delighted. Oh, Johnny, um, oh, Carl, this is Johnny, another friend of Mr. Bishop. Very delighted, very pleased. <laughs> I know Johnny. This is my brother, Filippo. 
Brandy. What's about a nice brandy? You've all had dinner, no? No, Mr. Morgan hasn't. Oh, I brought my own. <laughs> you must be very hungry. What about a nice steak? Fine. Everyone else, a nice brandy? I wouldn't mind a nice brandy myself. <laughs> Max, cognac, bitte. Here. Hi, right, thanks. Having, uh, having trouble at home? There's more to come. Wait till he hears about Falda. I told Filippo. You're a chatterbox. I didn't think you'd mind. Mind about what? Oh, you might as well tell them. It might be. I mean, we have hoped. <laughs> to make short, my father and I are expecting. Oh. What is it? Oh, Carl means that we have made certain plans. Ah. Does, uh, does your dad know? Oh, no. There's a shop in Dean Street, two stories. Make a fine restaurant. Already? It'd take a lot of money. My aunt. You know my aunt, Mr. Bishop. Oh, yes. The one with the walls. Oh, tight as an oyster. But if she likes Mafalda. And why shouldn't she? But of course, that's what I say. She should be glad to have a gutsy in her family. What do you mean Mafalda's not going? No, Filippo. In spite of you. I'd do it again. More lies. It was not a lie. Didn't you say of a certain lady that you had men in her room at night? Oh, I never said men. Lying again? I'm not lying. I'm not lying. The one man. Prove it. Prove it. Prove it. I can't. No, of course you can't. Because you invented the whole thing to drive us apart, didn't you? No, she didn't. Who are you? I'm the man that says that you're a liar. What? But it's not your fault because a certain lady's been telling you stories. Take that back! Now, don't get excited. Oh, please, no fighting here. Look, Gladys is a nice girl, but she's human. Who is this? Now, listen to me! Monday night, half past eleven or a little later, you came up the fire escape. You knocked on the kitchen door. You went down again because she couldn't find the key. You came up the front way. The supper was ready. Do you remember the bacon and egg she was frying? She was frying them for me. I only got that today. Never mind, Filippo. They'll, they'll take it back if it hasn't been used. Your steak. I'm not so sure I deserve this. I'm sorry, Filippo. I'll, I'll go. No, please. <laughs> you better, better let him go. Well, you got what you wanted. I could crawl under a snake. And so it goes on throughout the day and the night, in a score of departments. This creation of the dramatic, glamorous, intensely exciting world of films. This ideal combination of bold ideas and meticulous craftsmanship throughout the studios. For many people, stars and technicians, today's work is finished. Miracle in Soho with John Gregson and Belinda Lee. Hell Drivers with Stanley Baker, Peggy Cummins and Patrick McGowan. High Tide at Noon with Better St. John, Michael Craig, Flora Robson and Patrick McGowan. Across the Bridge with Rod Steiger, David Knight and Marla Landy. Doctor at Large with Dirk Bogard, Muriel Pavlo, Donald Sindon and James Robertson Justice. Now the cans are collected containing the vital feat of film from these and many other productions in every state of progress. The van stands by to rush them to the laboratories where they'll be developed overnight. At Pinewood 2, work will go on through the night preparing for tomorrow. For this is a job that never stops. 
the constant challenging job of making first class entertainment for the screens of the world